And I'm Tom Garrett. I remember the meeting as wonderfully intimate. There were 60 people there. Saul Restivo here. In November 1976, I was among the 109 attendees at the first meeting. I'm Dorothy Nelkin. The interest in a more diverse definition of social studies of science can be deduced from the many disciplines represented among the 160 registrants at the meeting. of definition, a review of the first annual meeting of the Society for the Social Studies of Science. Dorothy Nelkin, Program on Science, Technology, and Society, Cornell University. I was asked to comment on this first annual meeting of 4S as Renaissance social scientist, i.e. non-sociologist, non-historian. As I meandered around the halls asking people what they thought about the meeting, two quite contradictory opinions emerged. Those in the traditional sociology of science thought that the field was losing focus. Others, however, claimed the conference was too focused. We were both graduate students at the time. Uh, I met Tom carrying, uh, I recall, Robert Merton's briefcase is my recollection, and I was carrying a stack of materials for the conference from Bob McGinnis at Cornell, who was organizing the conference. Uh, though I had to carry Merton's bags, he did not spring for a hotel room for me. And I'm not even sure if I, I can't remember, but I don't think I attended the banquet because you had to pay and I didn't have any money. I stayed at somebody's house. We slept that night in an attic. For some reason, flies had gathered there and we rolled out a sleeping bag with um, a massive number of carcasses of flies. That is probably more a, an enduring memory than anything that actually happened at the conference. There was one stream of sessions Everybody had to be there. If you weren't there, it means you were playing hooky. To an innocent Briton, staring wide-eyed at a bit of the American sociological scene for the first time, the 4S conference provided the same sort of reorientation experience that one's first fieldwork provides. Things are much more complicated than they look from a distance. Frankly, I expected to be confronted with a solid American phalanx of norms, citations and exponential curves into which the Europeans would be allowed about as much real penetration as the grains of rice flung at a bride. A symbol of fertilization, but afterwards, or you all go back to your own beds. There were, there were battle lines drawn, uh, even if we didn't know exactly how this was going to turn out. There were the externalists and the internalists. There were the cognitive versus the social structure, and there were the positivists versus the relativists. The most systematic session was on the structural characteristics of science, clearly a well-defined area of sociology with methodological consistency. But what about the session on the social and cultural context of science? I expected some discussion of science education and of the socialization of scientists, for, their, for these are an important part of the social context of science. Of course, then you threw in the first inklings of what was coming from Europe, um, uh, traces of lab ethnographies and discourse analytic sure. perspectives. Um, that There was a bit of a culture clash there. I, I, I don't want to deny that everything made sense on the first hearing. There were a lot of people saying, what the hell is going on here? The surprise was that the mood of the meeting was far from solid. And when attempts were made from the floor to maintain homogeneity, manifest displeasure was expressed by Americans. 
In the panel on comparative social organization, I missed work on science in the developing world. At virtually every plenary session, a copy of David Bloor's recently published Knowledge and Social Imagery was being passed around and causing quite a stir. There were moments when British and American English sparred, and you would find Americans in the bathroom looking into mirrors and saying, controversy. I think it's altogether fitting that we, uh, the society, this year, at this, these annual meetings uh, in Denver, give John Law uh, our award for lifetime achievement and contributions to the field. John presented um, his work on X-ray protein crystallography. It's it's an iconic specialty study. Uh, uh, some would say, John, it was your best work. We we. Uh, um, are in, in uh, Garfield and ISI's debt. I mean, to talk about it as patronage, that's what it was. Derek J. DeSala Price, the historian of science from Yale, Arnold Thackeray, the historian of science at Penn. They were important in bringing that historical side of things um, and really did make it um, not just a club of sociologists. has been said in an ideological context about the relationship of knowledge and power and about the various uses of science for political purposes. Are these not researchable areas? I, I, I'm going to go into one. <laughs> okay, so Bruno Latour decided that he, he would bring some news from the field, uh, from the salt lab where he was doing field work. When the slide went up showing the uh, heating ducts, the ventilation ductwork in the roof at the salt lab, we were all scratching our heads thinking that Bruno surely was a madman. And if I recall correctly, it was at that point that Merton leaned over to me and whispered, or maybe it was louder than a whisper, in my ear, he said, pretentious mush. In, in 74, at Montreal, the American Sociological Association, there was a formation meeting, and I think probably at that time the thought was to get a section in the American Statistical, or American Sociological Association, and uh, talking about NSF funding, Gruner was the NSF representative who did science across uh, NSF, and out of that meeting came a change reflected in the earlier newsletters to make it non-sociological. Um, the founding of the society happened a year before the annual meeting. It was at a San Francisco meeting um, uh, uh, in August of 1975. The charter was passed shortly thereafter. Uh, believe it or not, there were secretary treasurers before Wes Schrum. You're not going to believe it, but Wes was not the first. Um, Bob McGinnis was the first. and. Jerry Gaston then picked up, right, at that point. Jerry Gaston, and then Lowell Hargens. And then Lowell Hargens. And then Scott Long. And Scott Long. And, and then Tom. Yeah, that's Garrett. right. Over the years, David Edge would fume at the repeated use of the Society for the Social Studies of Science. Final predominant the European Day was not a purely symbolic gesture. Yet intellectual progress in our field must come from cross-pollination of conflicting views, as well as from cumulative investigation of narrow areas of consensus. Perhaps this tension should be fostered as we nurture the newborn forest towards a healthy adolescence. I think probably we're about ready to say happy birthday to 4S. Uh, may you flourish for another 25 years. 